Hello and welcome to the second session of the Infigo and Print IQ Connect Print IQ webinar. This morning we met and we covered quite a range of topics and we're excited this afternoon, UK time of course, to be meeting with our American and Canadian counterparts. We're very lucky today to have a great team and a very important person as well joining us to go through and explain how the partnership and Connect Print IQ works. So let me just take you through today's agenda or the session agenda. We're going to meet the team, first of all, a background into Infigo and the Print IQ solution. We're going to hear some updates from the Print IQ team. And then we're very lucky to have a live demo provided to us by Paul and Alex from the technical side. And then we'll speak to Eric from the Voom group, who will tell us firsthand what it's like to be a customer of both Infigo and Print IQ. And then finally, we'll open the floor up to some questions and answers, giving you an opportunity to ask any question. And we welcome any question. There's no such thing as a silly question uh, in that debate. First of all, we'd like everyone who's on today's session to jump in the chat and just tell us quickly where they're from. Um, ideally, which country would be great, territory, where they're, where they're based, and what company. So please, if you've got five seconds, jump in and just show us that the chat's working for you. Tell us where you're from. And if you've got anything you're looking forward to learning today or anything you want to ask, now's the time to jump in there. You'll also notice there's some emojis as well. So if you want to um, share your emotion at any point or support or um, maybe some laughter, then please feel free. So we've got we have got a lot of people jumping in straight away. Um, fantastic. Mostly Canadian Americans so far. Brilliant. Excellent. I can't keep up with how quickly these are coming through. So I'm just going to say that's brilliant. Oh, Puerto Rico got that one. Fantastic. Okay. So throughout this session, we'll be putting up polls as well. We would obviously like you all to take part and share your thoughts so we can analyze some of the data later on. Um, and again, please keep the questions coming and uh, jump in the chat where possible. So the team today is just going to go through, first of all, I'm Chris, I'm from Infigo, and I head up the marketing here. I then will be joined by Paul Bromley, head of sales at Infigo. Alex and um, Paul will also help us from a technical standpoint. And then in this afternoon's session, we're delighted to have Craig Powell join us from the US sales team from Print IQ. So just before we um, jump into the first poll, I'm going to bring Paul Bromley into the uh, into the into the fray. Paul, um, thank you again for joining us for the second time today. Um, an interesting scenario here. You've obviously worked for both Infigo and uh, Print IQ. But one of the questions that I always wanted to ask you was um, when you were selling Print IQ and, and working with those guys, what was different about Print IQ compared to the competition? Um, yeah. Um, first, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, um, and thanks for asking that question, Chris. Um, so yeah, I've uh, I've uh, been both a Print IQ and an Invigo employee, and at my time at IQ, I'll say that the the big standout thing was the um, there was twofold really, the user interface and the product. With it being cloud based and very intuitive, makes it very appealing for businesses nowadays because. The, the, the print knowledge isn't there in abundance in staff, potentially, for the new uh, wave of staff coming through a business. So a system needs to be simple to use, but uh, very intuitive and also powerful behind the scenes. And my time at IQ, that was nailed on. You know, it was just a fantastic system to use. Very proud to sort of uh, promote that and go and see companies with it because you knew that it would make a difference. And then secondary to that was the um, the power behind the logo, which was the team and the development. So Infigo and IQ are very, very similar in the fact that they want to be innovative. They want their want their product to be best in class. So I'd say those are the two takeaways, really simplicity, but mm -hmm. also the innovation and the development roadmap, which is really important for uh, for software applications nowadays. Okay, brilliant. And so they're clearly a very good fit. What was the value you saw from a, a print IQ point of view when you had saw both going into your customers' workshop? 
Yeah, you knew with confidence that it would make a difference. So, um, you know, it's very bold statement that, but when you've got customers like Eric will uh, no doubt testament to later on, you know that it will do things that maybe other systems can't do, such as, is it maybe a clunky interface? Is it hard to get new staff to use it? And I think change is the the big thing for both systems, whether it's in Figo, whether it's uh, an IQ MIS system, it's adapting or adopting that change. And if a system is very simple to use and very nice on the eye, but also, as I say, it's got the power behind it and the pistons to go if you want to push it through its paces, then uh, that was the big difference at IQ. Um, and then the integration into Infigo, that simplicity and that seamless bi-directional communication that uh, frees up the team as well. That was another big thing. So uh, yeah, the innovative piece was uh, was high on the agenda for a lot of companies when I spoke to people. And I guess now switching to the other side, being with, being with Infigo, has that strength, is that argument strengthened for you seeing how the data now starts from the web to print going into into print IQ? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the difference now is, um, you know, you, you're more dealing with front of house and how you can assist and help businesses to turbo boost revenue streams. And I think that is massively important to any business nowadays is to look at themselves and see how they can evolve as a as a company. You know, don't put too much strain on the overheads of maybe adding bodies. Look at different methods and different ways of doing that. Um, and one thing I've seen at Infigo is, you know, if you can put a, a custom or purpose-built B2B or B2C portal in your business, then you'll definitely reap the rewards. Now, that then brings challenges. And this is where we are well-based now to be consultative and say, okay, you know, if, if your website is a success, which we know it will be, mm -hmm. then you will get pain points then throughout the business. And this is where IQ then, you know, almost flatlines those those challenging waves of fluctuations in the business that could come through in regards to job numbers um, and, and eases that through production. So, uh, yeah, very important. Okay. And um, what are you seeing in terms of requirements from the customer right now? What are they kind of asking you for when it comes to their workflow? Yeah, seamless uh, removal of touch points, um, integration into an array of products. So, you know, we've got IQ, but we also want it integrated to other platforms and um, the ability to have a very strong and robust API. So companies now are becoming more tech savvy in the days gone by. An, a an API would be a question that you'd ask to a business and they'd look at you as if to say you are speaking in a different language. And what is an API? We'd, we'd be keen to learn about it because it sounds quite interesting. Um, but nowadays, we're finding that people are asking us, how good, how robust is your API? What can it do? Tell us about the limitations. We're not too worried about what it can do. So I would say that companies now are more tech savvy and they are a long way down the journey of the evaluation process when we get to talk to them now. And I would say most commonly, one of the first questions is, can we see your API? Give us a link to it, give us a token, gives you documentation. So. Um, that's definitely key, but simplicity as well. So people do not want tech heavy products nowadays. And I think one of the things that Infigo is striving to do is by simplifying that process, either through a store build or through an integration. And as we've done with IQ, which is probably one of our most in-depth pieces of innovation and integration, um, we are now pushing the connection communication to its limits. Okay, thanks, Paul. That's a great insight. I'm just going to bring Craig in. Hey, Craig, nice to meet you. Um, before we, um, you know, get your thoughts on today, if you could share a little bit about how, how our queue is positioned from the North American standpoint for those that are maybe not too familiar, and also share a, a bit of information about your role. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, and and really, it's a, it's good to have a build on what Paul just said there. Uh, I think you heard a lot of the same things that I'd like to, to point out in that, um, you know, PrintIQ as a company uh, ha have a strong presence back to our foundations over in the Australian and New Zealand markets. Uh, but over the last six or seven years have started to push more into North America, uh, you know, including um, here in the United States as well as in Canada. And we're doing so by, by paying attention and listening to what markets need. Um, you know, we're proud to be one of the most robust offerings in the market when it comes to an MIS product. Um, we are, are one of the only ones who can really mix and match uh, types of printing disciplines all in the same platform. 
So the power that you have there to be able to, uh, you know, handle all the different revenue streams inside of a business when it comes to the products that you produce inside one product that can act as the core of your business. Uh, we just continue to see great results from companies who, who are able to, you know, choose our product. And so um, it's been great to, to build on that. Um, we're, we're very aggressive with listening to our customers, with listening to things that they need. Um, you know, 80% uh, of all of the development that goes in from the IQ side uh, is all customer initiated requests and things that are uh, real world uh, you know, needs that they have for their business. So we continue to build on that inside of the DNA of Print IQ to listen, to put forward um, all of those suggestions and ideas into a product that continues to you know, grow for what people need for their business. Um, we're coming off a record breaking year uh, in 2023. Um, you know, the largest banner year for IQ in our history. And uh, when we're looking to continue pushing forward, which includes things like uh, partnerships with Infigo, uh, we, we hear customers have a need for continuing to push and try to achieve the dream of automation inside their business. And that all starts with, with having a core uh, central part, which is, the, which is the need we fill from an MIS standpoint of all of the data flowing in and out of the business. But then that also includes having a really good, robust option, you know, on the front end of receiving orders yeah. in through a web to print. And we're proud to, you know, have a dedicated integration with Infigo as, as we're excited to, to share with everybody today. Thanks, Craig. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to today from the demonstration? You know, uh, I think that we, building on conversations that we've had, one of the things that we are proud to always talk about when it comes to what works with Infigo is, is really just how robust we've been able to get with not just receiving information, but also feeding information back. The bi-directional capabilities of that integration continue to get better all the time. Uh, and, you know, having a systems that talk to each other in a, in a really robust way allows for you to uh, be more seamless in your workflow. So I'm just excited to, uh, you know, continue to see the evolution of that. Today. Awesome, Craig. Please stay with us for the Q&A as well. And, uh... We look forward to talking to you more. Thanks a lot. Thanks, gentlemen. Okay, so um, I'm going to jump into the first poll. We're going to ask how many of you currently have an MIS solution? Um, let's see. Okay, so it looks like we've just come up to 50% of you do have. Oh, we do not integrate with web to print but you do have an MIS. So, of course, I'm strongly going to suggest that you do want to look at web to print and integrate with it. 23% uh, don't currently have one. So I'd suggest you talk to Print IQ on that. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. So as part of today, really, one of the, the repeated messages is going to be about workflow automation. And both Infigo and Print IQ fit part of, it can be a small, medium or large workflow, but also can work with other partners and other systems as well. There's a dark diagram you'll see on the screen right now, and it shows the uh, the myriad of options that you can have between different partners to create an automated workflow and the panacea that we really would like to help you achieve, which is lights out automation. Um, this is a lovely segue into our technical segment with Alex and Paul, who are now going to take you through not just the basics of the integration, but also um, some of the... Um, bells and whistles that you can expect in the future. So I'm now going to hand the floor over to Alex. Good afternoon, Alex. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> good afternoon and good morning to everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Alex, uh, Technical Operations Director here at Infigo. Um, been here for 10 years now. Um, have watched not just uh, the business grow, but the product. Um, and was part of the initial kind of partnership process that we went through with Print IQ many years ago and have been heavily involved in the Connect Print IQ plugin that you see today um, and obviously working closely alongside Paul for the last two and a half, two and a half, three years and his uh, predecessors before him. So yeah, really excited to show you what we've got today, um, but obviously also keen to emphasize that um, this is a, as a product and a partnership will continue to grow and evolve. Um, similar to what Craig said earlier, like a lot of the things that we have included in this Print IQ plugin um, have been from direct feedback from 
mutual customers using it. And so this will continue to grow and it won't be in the same uh, position that it is in now in, in another two and a half years time. It will continue and it's a key focus for us as a business. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Paul, I'm the technical integration specialist uh, for Print IQ, uh, one of a couple. Um, but I was part of the team that worked directly with Alex um, for the last two and a half years based on feedback from customers and requirements to essentially bring the integration to where it's at today and continue to work closely with him to drive it forward. So really looking forward to taking everyone through uh, what we have as an offering and yeah, look forward to any questions at all. That's right. Yeah, if anybody does have any questions at any point, as Chris mentioned, pop them in the chat and uh, we'll try and answer them as we go. <clears throat> but this is the fun part of the webinar, the, the live yeah. demo. So uh, please bear with us. But our key focus with this integration is twofold, really. And again, many have touched on it um, in the build up to this piece, but it's really to improve um, speed to market for our mutual customers. And this is a blend of our native Infigo tools. Um, alongside the additional functionality that the Connect uh, Print IQ plugin provides. And that's from creating branded storefronts to having products, pricing and orders flowing quickly and seamlessly between the systems. And then secondly, to improve efficiency through automation. Um, and that's removing manual touch points, um, again, seamless data flowing between the systems, and then a single source of truth, which um, is print IQ in this in this instance. Um, our Connect Print IQ plugin um, is our most in-depth and most powerful plugin ever. Um, it is the one that we have invested the most time, effort, resource um, in. Um, and a few of the highlights that we're going to cover today include um, demonstrating how you can sync products, um, both inventory and sales item products and static print on demand products from Print IQ into Infigo, um, fetching live inventory um, and stock levels directly from Print IQ, creating quotes and returning back um, real time pricing, um, and then pushing orders into Print IQ so that they can then take over the production process. And then lastly, fetching status updates back so that you can keep your customers in the loop um, on how their orders and jobs are progressing. So firstly, before we get into the, the details of the plugin, I'll touch on this, but just briefly, we've got other uh, materials on it and other information. So afterwards, if you want to get in touch about this specific part and let us know, but we have worked um, tirelessly over the last 12 to 18 months on providing our customers with tools to create storefronts that may or may not look like this. And so this is a fairly, fairly standard, um, b2b portal that we see us making for our customers and our customers making and we have the tools under the hood that allow to do this and that's from a storefront creation form where at the point of creating a storefront you would upload your logo your branding colors fonts imagery um, and then it would create the storefront out of the box with those preset um, as part of the theme <clears throat> and then we have our, our cms plus uh, content templates that allow you to configure and control content on your site, like this banner, um, allowing you to have content administrators um, instead of web developers that are maintaining your Infigo storefront. Um, <clears throat> but onto the plugin. Um, so let's assume you've already created a nice storefront that looks like this, and now you want to get some products on there and start taking orders. And using Connect Print IQ, that is uh, a fairly straightforward process. So I'll jump into the admin. At the moment in our products list, we have a handful of products, but these are just demo ones that we've created in order to make the storefront look nice. So what I'll do now is I will actually create some products from Print IQ and have them pushed directly into Infigo. So I'm going to jump into my Print IQ uh, admin. I'm going to navigate to a sales item. This is my Infigo beer label. I'm just going to uh, edit something on here. <clears throat> Obviously, this works the same as if you were to edit or create a product. And then under the hood, that is triggering a webhook into Infigo to create a product if it doesn't exist 
or update a product if it already does exist in Infidia. I'm going to do the same for a um, static print on demand product now. So here we've got my uh, promo static sign. Maybe we want to change the stock that it's being produced on. Not update that. <clears throat> so um, what will now happen is uh, a trigger will be queued in Print IQ and to send that information into Infigo. What we also support alongside products is the creation of um, categories. So if you have your products uh, arranged uh, into a hierarchical category structure in Print IQ and you want to replicate that in Infigo, you can do that. So we will create the categories, we'll create the, we'll pull in the imagery, the category names, and we'll insert those products in it so that you can have a similar navigational structure for your customers to navigate the storefront with. Alternatively, you can um, use our own categories to create a more complex um, um, hierarchy, um, and then it will dump those products that from Print IQ into a, into a dummy category for you to then move um, thereafter. So here we've got um, one product to come in, which is the first one I uh, modify, which is my stock product. So you'll see it's come in with, um, as a type of stock. Um, it's pulled in the product imagery. Um, it's got the full description. And then if I jump into the product variant, it's also pulling in things like uh, the fact we want to track inventory. Um, you can specify the minimum and maximum basket quantities from print IQ, and also whether you want to allow back orders or not. Um, you'll see here it's, give, it's got a, a stock quantity of 10,000, but that's just our default value. And that we will ignore because we will pull that um, inventory level live from uh, print IQ when we need it. If you had quantity tiers that you had applied to your products in print IQ, we'd also replicate them here. So if you wanted to restrict the quantities you want your customers to order in, that will also create the quantity tiers and, and restrict the customer in the UI here as well. If I jump back to the product list, we should have our second product here. Yeah. So here it's a promo static sign. And here you'll see the type is a static PDF. So what this has also done in Infigo when it's created the product, it's also created the static PDF part. So here we've already got the uh, print ready artwork file um, that was supplied from Print IQ so that when it's ordered, um, we can push that back in with the job. Um, <clears throat> So let me jump into the front end and show you what that looks like. Um, I will show you the stock product and also the static print on demand product. <clears throat> so um, static promo sign here again, uh, the display and design of this page you can configure, um, but I will just put in a quantity of 100. And then under the hood, what this is doing is this making a request to print IQ for that specific um, SKU and the quantity, and it's returning the price back. And it's also creating that quote in Print IQ, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, the other product we created was the stock product. And here you'll see the live inventory level for this in Print IQ at this moment in time. Um, so we are making a request every time we display this to the customer and validating it on order submission to make sure that there is available stock. And again, I will enter in a quantity under the hood. That's again, creating an estimate or a quote in Print IQ and returning that price back to um, our customer. So if I jump into Print IQ now and go to my quotes, uh, here we have my static promo sign and my beer label. Paul, do you want to tell us a little bit about the information you can see here? Yeah, absolutely. So um, from a storefront side, the information that the customers uh, want to see is kept low key. It's obviously the stuff that they need to know what they're ordering. But when it comes to print IQ and it's creating the quotation, it's really holding all of the core information that's required. So a customer in their eyes is ordering a really simple product. But as we know from a print perspective, there's a lot more to it. So in the case of the static sign, what we'll be doing is calculating all of the, um, not only the sell price, but we'll be calculating the raw cost price of everything that goes into that. 
and job itself, but including the time that's required and stuff like that. Um, and that's the simplicity of doing it is by with like what Alex was saying with sync of the products the traditionally both sides the web to print and the MIS system would need to house that product in this scenario where print IQ is becoming the source of truth we're putting the um, the products themselves directly into print IQ with all of the information required to produce it and pushing that data forward so from a traditionally an integration to a from a web to print system in MIS would cover removing double entry and um, in this case we're removing double entry when it comes to actually making updates and general maintenance to um, your product library yeah thank you Paul so I'm gonna add um, my products to my basket um, <clears throat> and then here uh, your traditional kind of e-commerce um, basket cart uh, we have the option to type in my delivery instructions um, <clears throat> and of course you can offer things like discount codes and so on then I go through my checkout I think one thing is worth adding as well Alex what um, while the other bits we've added in obviously when it comes to payments and stuff like that is the option for um, additional checkout attributes um, based on mm -hmm. the storefront. So obviously if customers need to provide additional data um, for against the purchase orders, such as cost centers and other info that needs to come through, um, obviously that Infigo developed those extra fields now, which also sync back to print IQ. So it's just yep. uh, everything's there. And a fairly complex mapping as well as to where you want it to appear in print IQ once it makes its way. Yeah. And, and again, um, again like where you are now, that's another example, isn't it, of this? Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, we have integrations with uh, numerous um, uh, couriers, um, but we also have an integration with Easy Post. They integrate, obviously, globally with couriers and services worldwide. Um, and you can create a uh, mapping in our uh, Connect Print IQ plugin that translates from what you're offering the customer and the selections they make in Infigo to uh, the shipping methods that you have set up in Print IQ, so that when that sales order comes through, your dispatchers know exactly what um, method they need to use in order to dispatch that job based on what the customer has selected that they think they want and the amount that they've potentially paid for it. Um, secondly, then we have um, uh, a number of payment gateways if you wanted to offer credit and debit card payments um, from Stripe to WorldPay, PayPal, Authorize.net. But obviously also um, purchase order and we have the ability to upload a file here um, if you wanted to uh, provide uh, allow your customers to provide those files their pd uh, purchase order files uh, let me just select one. this could be anything um, and a purchase order number oh dear the wrong side i'll leave that for now um, and then i can confirm my order i get an overview of this and as an end user, an end customer, I can then be sent a order confirmation email um, from Infigo that will be branded and give them a summary of um, the order that they've just placed. Um, what's happening under the hood then is um, for our stock items, they're being collated and our static uh, PDF products, uh, we're actually generating the output and getting that job ready in order to then push it into Print IQ once everything's ready. Um, Paul, would you like to uh, jump in and take over from what happens on the print? I would side love here? to. I'm just going to quickly um, swap over to my screen. So, yeah, Alex touched on it briefly beforehand. Whenever a request is made to print IQ for pricing or stock quantity, etc., um, certainly with the pricing side of things, a quote will get generated in print IQ um, to obviously get the latest costing. So, why the things that that part of the integration that was introduced um, a few years ago now, what that's going to reduce is the requirement to hold pricing in both systems. So that's been a, a pain point for many years where um, every time a price has changed within the MIS platform or production, it would have to be brought forward to the actual web to print. With the pricing being real time between Print IQ and Figo, it means that the price is always up to date. You still have the ability within Print IQ to fix contract rate pricing for your customers but you can leave the pricing totally real time so what happened when 
uh, Alex accepts the order on the Infigo side is that this quote as uh, 6775 was created and Infigo sends the message to print IQ2, create the quote and then accept it. Any additional notes obviously get passed through. And what we'll find is now, if we go to the orders page within IQ, which is the sort of initial landing point, we'll see that we've now had the order created for not only the promo static sign, but also the sales order or stock item in print IQ world. So both avenues of the jobs that are here can either be done internally or externally. So the product part of the um, order itself, that could be produced in-house um, on equipment that's based there. And that contains all of the job information, how the art needs to be produced and how it needs to flow through the shop floor. Um, but it can also be fully outsourced and that can be done manually or automated or even partially done. So if the these posters, for example, are being printed in-house, but laminated externally, then we can set print IQ up to know that that needs to be done against the product. So when it hits a certain point of production, it splits off and the job is sent out for outsource and received back in. And the same goes for the stock items as well. Stock itself could be internal or external. So on this morning session, um, the guests that joined us, we um, worked with them for a warehouse integration. And whenever the store items or stock items come in to print IQ, this is automatically sent out again by the API to the relevant party. If I break into the job itself and I'll open the sales item up in the background, what we see against a printed item, um, in this case, it's quite simple because it's a poster. Uh, but what we'll see within this is the items that are required to get us through production and where the job's up to. Um, if we look down the right hand side, we'll also see that the Infigo order number is placed within here. So it's easy to report and track on what um, job is related to what Infigo order in case there's any phone calls or anything requesting details. Um, and then from a delivery perspective, what we'll see there is the delivery price has been passed through. Um, so that price in which was sold to the customers passed through and we store the actual price. And we also store any obviously delivery notes that are placed in. So if delivery instructions are placed on checkout, then these can be shown at this point here. They can be output on delivery notes wherever the customer needs them to be. If I switch over now to the stock side of things, what we'll see within this is similar information, but a bit more cut down. We'll see the additional notes that Alex placed in the order, as well as the order number. We'll also see the real time stock level, which what we'll notice there is that stock level is different to what we saw originally. Whenever orders are placed within Print IQ and Infigo, the stock is reserved for the order that's placed until the item has been picked. So once I've gone in here now, and um, if I act as the person on the shop floor who's doing the picking and packing, if I click to pick the item, I can do this via barcode um, from a tablet, from a phone. I can even print off a traditional packing slip and work that way. So there's multiple routes within Print IQ to actually fulfill and pack the item. Um, I'm just going to confirm that which says I've picked the item and packed it. And what we'll see here now is the status of that job will change. Um, the good thing about Print IQ is if we're working from the stock side of things, if I'm working in the stock department here, just refresh the screen, what we'll see within this is on all of the job boards, if an order itself contains not only a printed product, but a stock item, we'll see that the, the items are linked. So if I'm working from the stock board doing picks, I can see within this that there's other items that are linked to this job. So I know, okay, I'm picking this item to go out the door, but what I, what I know is that I can't dispatch that item until the other items are finished. So to cut the um, area a bit short, what I'm going to do here is mimic that the job has actually gone through production and been fully produced, which will put this job into a finished production state. What I can do from this point here is dispatch the item. So I can do that from within the job, from the dispatch board. Um, depending on how I'm operating Print IQ, I can do it in one of a couple of places. At this point here, um, much like in Figo, we also integrate with multiple uh, third parties um, to provide courier and data. So if I create a consignment from here and I'm using uh, freight integration, then certain like FedEx, for example, who it's been selected, um, what this will do is call out to the FedEx API and it will book the consignment in, return the actual cost of the consignment. So we've got what we've sold it for, what we've paid for it, 
and it will produce the labels that need to be printed. So not working out of two screens, I'm working out of a single interface, which is Print IQ. In this case, it's a manual shipment. It hasn't got any um, freight integration enabled in the site. But um, if I put in an um, example consignment number within that, just to fill the box out, so that's where your traditional uh, tracking number consignment number would go if you're doing this manually. And at the point of me hitting create consignment, what this will do now is within Print IQ, it will create any delivery notes that I need to pack with the job. Um, but it's now going to send out a status update to Infigo. So it's going to let Infigo know that this job has now been dispatched in its entirety. Um, and here's the tracking information, which will then, if requested, that can trigger uh, an email to the customer. Just another point to point out, Paul, at the top there, you've got your invoice paid and, um, yeah. and um, dispatched flags. So we also send that information into PrintRQ. So obviously the order I placed was using a purchase order. Yeah. Um, and in we have a, a configuration so you can decide how you want the integration to behave. But in this instance, because it was on purchase order, we don't want Print IQ to assume that it's been invoiced and it's been paid because it, it hasn't. The idea is that you'll um, invoice it later. But if you were to pay via credit card in Infigo, you can change that behavior to let Print IQ that it has been invoiced, it has been paid. So then nothing else needs to be. Um, yeah, absolutely correct. So, um, like Alex said, if you're paying via credit card, these fields will both be marked as um, yes. And that just means that there's an invoice produced with a payment marker, which can be exported out to the accounts package automatically. So it saves um, having to get a job within Print IQ, raising an invoice, checking whether it's been paid in Infigo. If the job's been paid, Infigo tells Print IQ that. So it's a simple export at the end just to get the final invoice into the books. Um, I think it's worth touching on Alex as well as um, what we've done in the, collectively in the dispatch area is that in some instances a job won't be dispatched in its entirety and um, we recently um, within the last year worked on a development together didn't we to enable partial shipping so if stock mm -hmm. was partially fulfilled or an order was partially fulfilled then whatever the quantity of or even if it's a five item order and only one item's gone that day is passed back to Infigo now. So the customer can get an email to say that an order is partially fulfilled. So it's all about that uh, two-way communication between the, the platforms, which keeps the customers up to date. And it saves uh, the account managers getting phone calls to ask where things are. The, it's always up to date between the two platforms. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we can check now is if I grab the Infigo order reference and pop back to the Infigo platform, what we'll see within this is any of the orders um, that have gone out. So, Alex, this is where you might need to give me a hand. Uh, actually... Yeah, so if you go, so... yeah, that's it. So... You'll see the top SATA 6832. That's marked as shipped. And if you expand that. You yeah, so if I expand that out, and what we'll see within this now is that, like Alex said, the order's now shown as shipped. And where I put my example tracking number in, that's now put that into uh, the Infigo order. So that would have gone to the customer. And the same with the shipped quantity. I shipped this one in its entirety, but if I had it done, then obviously it would show that difference there. Um, yeah, and then from Infigo, you can uh, brand and create your customized uh, notifications to customers so that they can receive a, uh, an email to let them know it's dispatched. As Paul touched on, if it's a partial shipment, how many? Um, and if it contains the tracking information, they can access that directly yeah um sorry carol mate now just one last thing um i wanted to uh quickly demonstrate if if you're done paul is yeah absolutely do a spot yeah. the screen um, yeah is uh our our latest piece of development um so obviously what we've shown you so far is um is demonstrating um quite a significant integration but it's all based on you having um SKUs and products created in print iq up front um which is great um because that allows you to create those products again in infigo seamlessly um but it does carry with it um some restrictions um over the amount of products you potentially want to want to offer um and also there's an overhead of creating those up front um, so what we have been working on um alongside this is the ability to create custom quotes um, so 
historically, uh, when you're creating a product manually and not via the sync, you will have the ability to um, enter in your uh, static print on demand um, SKU here, or um, now um, select from a list of sales item product codes um, here. So this is what this is doing under the hood is this is querying your print IQ instance and returning all of your stock product codes or sales item codes here. So I can select from this list that just helps with any sort of uh, errors that may occur when you're typing in a series of numbers and letters. And then we've got our custom piece. And now what this allows you to do is to um, build up a uh, product mapping in Infigo to a print IQ uh, estimate based on components from stock, front and back color, number of pages, finish size, fold, um, section and, and job operations. And so here I can create a, uh, a base product against my Infigo product that will be a single section product. Uh, it will be produced on a 100 gloss stock. Uh, it will be CMYK front, uh, no color back, and it will be an A4 size. So I can create that. And the next time someone accesses that page, that is the est those are the parameters that we'll use in order to create a quote in Print IQ. What I can also do then is offer the customer options to make modifications to the estimate on the fly. And so here we offer size, material, finish. If I look at material, for example, we offer one here, but you could have five or six. So I could actually create another material stock type here. And this might be, I don't know, 150 GSM to the customer. And then map a different stock type for that specific um, selection. So instead of 100 gloss text, it might actually be uh, 100 matte cover, for example. And then I can save this. And now what that will do is if the customer was to use 100 GSM, it would pass that to stock. And if they were to select 150 GSM, it would pass the gloss text. And those products um, that you'd previously had to create in PrintIQ are no longer necessary for, for this to work. So it can mean you can offer custom sizes. Um, it can mean you can um, yeah, be really quite flexible. But the experience to the end customer is no different to what I showed you in the other journey where they're just selecting potentially sizes, materials, stocks, finishes, but under the hood, it's creating a custom quote. Yeah, I think it's really important, Alex, isn't it? In the day and age we are where there's a lot of customization in the world that um, end users want, it means we can put all of them offerings in a lot quicker and easier without having to create a product for every variance. So modifying and changing things just becomes so much quicker. Yep. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, Alex, thank you very much for that little insight as well. We had some questions coming in while you were demonstrating that. We'll bring them into the Q&A um, straight away. Um, so we'll start with those. Thank you very much. I'm now just going to uh, wake everybody up with a bit of a poll. And um, we're going to ask you, how many of you currently use a web to print platform? Okay. How many of you currently use a web to print platform? So 37% don't have a web to print platform. 27% do, but they do not integrate with their MIS system. 23% do and are fully integrated. And 13% do, but are considering a change. So some interesting numbers there. Okay, so um, following that fantastic um, demonstration by um, um, Paul and uh, Alex, I'm just going to bring in our guest today, which is um, Eric from the Voom Group. Good afternoon or good morning, Eric, for you. Um, first of all, for those that don't know you, just give us a little introduction into yourself and the Voom Group. I am uh, Eric Schlarb. Nice to meet everybody. I am a uh, lifelong printer. I got into the printing business when I was about 13 years old and went to work for a next door neighbor. And uh, I just kind of fell in love with it. There's just a lot of aspects of it that I liked. And so I stuck with it. And uh, my first 20 years of the printing business, I worked for three different printers. And then uh, about 20 years ago, in, in uh, 2002, I started this company and I've been successfully unemployed ever since. Fantastic. So, what, what's an average day look like for you, Eric? Well, there is no such thing as an average day for me, I don't think, but um, we're, we're, we're not a giant company. We're a, we're a smaller company, I think, probably than most of the customers that are 
uh, on this journey and trying to do what we've been able to do. Um, so, you know, my days go from uh, maybe being on a lift installing graphics at a customer's location to wow. Wow. Uh, there's days that I go back and run machines and then there's days that I work on my integration. And uh, so there, there's no there's no such thing as an average day, but that's part of what I like about it. So sounds like an interesting uh, role. So obviously you're um, I say obviously, but you're, you're a customer of both Print IQ and and Infigo. Um, which solution did you in, you know implement first? And um, tell me a bit about the order of that and why. Uh, we started first with Print IQ, um, mostly just because the MIS system that we had was just uh, so dated. It was a great system when we started with it, but that was in the early two thousands, and it just stopped developing. It, it stopped growing, and it just became. Uh, unusable i think in in relation to what we knew we could do and okay. it, it just took too long to do estimates customer service just was it just took too much work to do customer service to get to get estimates quickly for customers to get jobs into production uh managing production um it it, it just became too much and we were looking for something that was a lot more that had the ability to be more automated but uh just gave us you know, more speed at being able to respond to customers and, and get things moving. So um, okay. Print IQ was first, and then that was just, I guess, about a year and a half ago. And then we followed up pretty quickly after that, uh, right about a year ago with Infigo, um, because just because we wanted to be able to get the full integration from, from our storefront to uh, into production. So um, we that was our third attempt at web to print. and it's the the first one we is actually started i think our first web to print was 2011 um and it was it was not expensive um but it also didn't work really well for us we kept it for a long time we had a few customers that used it but uh it was never really successful for us it just it just took too long to build customer sites to build products uh customer adoption wasn't great it was clunky um so it, it it was a real challenge to get all of those things kind of working together. Um, but the, the second system we tried was, was nice. It, it was slick like in Figo. It looked professional. It was polished, but it was a much smaller company than, and they just didn't have the uh, development that you see within Figo and the ability to integrate was, was just not there. Um, it, I think it could have been there, but it was just almost too challenging to, to try and do. And, they were they were very difficult to work with, which is a, a very different experience working with Infiga. So um, very, kind of you, very kind of you. Were there any um any challenges, Eric, with Eva system? And and if there were, how did how did you know you guys overcome those? I think I think mostly our biggest challenges were having the time to do it. We have very limited resources. Mm -hmm. uh, most of that was was me. Um you know, changing MIS is is as a printing company owner, probably one of the most painful and difficult things that you can do. So making a decision to take that step is is a tough thing to do. And you know, you're going to devote a, a ton of time to it. And, uh, it, you know, you've got to get everybody in the building on board with it. And it's, it's just a lot of work. So we, we put that off for a long time. And then, you know, executing it was just challenging just to be able to find the time to do it. But as far as, you know, working with Print IQ and working with Infigo to get things done, it you know, it just takes time. It's a it's a process. There's a lot to it, uh, especially if you're trying to do it with very few people and very few resources. So uh, I'm, I think, you know, where we've come in the year is I'm pretty impressed with it. I, I, I'm pretty happy with, with where we've come and where we have to go from here is looking pretty promising, too. So excellent. Just Great feedback. Eric. What, what were the benefits that you realized once you started to have a connected workflow? Yeah, it just um, you know, when we finally really got things working, um, you know, being able to take, so we're a very diverse printer. We have lots of different kinds of machines. We do offset, we do digital, we do large format, we do laser engraving. So mm -hmm. the, the part of the challenge is getting jobs into the production workflow into all those different machines with, you know, everything being so different. Um, and it, it doesn't work for everything that we do. Most of what we do is very custom. It's you can't build a product for a customer for everything that they order. Although I don't think it's that 
maybe undoable. Uh, we'd love to just put quotes online for people to order their jobs. I, I, it may not be too far in the future that you can do that. Um, but <laughs> you know, being able to iterate products, get them up fast, and then be able to completely offload those things that can be done to you know away from customer service. Um, you know, we're we're at this point this week. We've we finally started working directly with uh, the Print IQ and Figo APIs, and now we have communication between our not only Print IQ and uh, and Figo, but into Zoho, which is our CRM, into our yeah. accounting, into uh, we use a, a third party. We use our integration with uh, Print IQ to calculate shipping costs, but we actually do our shipping in a third party software. Um, and now we're able to have orders come in, you know, in the middle of the night and before customer services even here, those orders can be produced. Uh, they show up at a print device ready to print. Um, we print it. If it's an order business card, you print it, you slit it, you slap it in a box and you scan a barcode and a label prints out and it's out the door. So I, you know, I don't think you can be any more uh, automated than that, other than uh, embodied robots that can <laughs> run the machines. I don't know. Uh, we don't want that, but um, yeah, it's it's it, it's just really giving us the ability to to not be interrupted by the things that are simple and that you don't need to do. Um, and ironically, the list of things that are simple keep growing. The more we do, the more we learn things that we didn't think we could do a couple months ago we see ways okay well you know we know how we can build this product now and make this be an automated thing too so uh, every time we add something to a customer's storefront or um, you know make it available for them it, it's just one less thing that we have to do uh, to make those orders go and it, it allows us to focus on the other things and getting more business which is what we really want to do it's the most important thing um, that sounds fantastic it's great to hear that you've moved on your your automated journey as well now and you've brought two more systems into the workflow so congratulations on that what would you say to anyone who's got um either one of the software pieces uh, in figo or print iq and maybe they're looking to or they've got one and looking at the other what would you say to those guys you know i think it's, it's just emphasizing the power of that integration I, I mean you guys did a good job of demonstrating it but i, I don't think you realize until you have it how powerful it is. Um, you know, our previous attempts, part of the problem with managing that is keeping pricing updated over here. Uh, you know, our storefront, if, once you have a, a certain number of products, it, just the challenge of keeping pricing updated uh, is, is a big job. And now uh, if we go to purchase a, a, a new order of banner stands and our price changes $3, then we have the ability to change that hardware price and print IQ in one place. And every customer that orders banner stands that doesn't have a price locked in can, you know, that can automatically adjust. So we don't have to, to manage a lot of things. A lot of the things that are the challenge of, uh, of, of keeping these things going, you're just eliminated. So I, I think, you know, I would, I would say, look at that and look at how much time you spend uh, doing those things that you just won't have to do anymore. And I think at that point, the, um, the value is pretty evident. It, it really is kind of the only way to go. Uh, it, it, I, I just think it just doesn't get any easier than this. And, and I would say, if you don't have that, you know, you really need to probably find a way to do it. I think that's what drew us into Infigo to begin with. And, uh, it's really been pretty incredible how much we've been able to accomplish, like I say, with pretty limited resources and, and not a lot of people We're we're a 20 employee company, you know, it's, okay. uh, it feels like something that only giant printers can do, but it's becoming kind of in reach for us smaller guys. And I think we can compete with anybody. Great. Thank, thanks, Eric. That's great advice. I'm just going to, if you could just hold on for us for a minute, because we're going to bring you into the Q&A. We're going to run a, another poll. We're going to, it's our final poll of the session. How many of you are working with a fully automated workflow like Eric? How many of you are working with a fully automated workflow? Okay, let's see what we've got on the numbers on the board. This is the last poll of the session, and then we're going to dive into a Q&A with everybody on the call. And we also welcome in Rob as well from Print IQ UK. Craig as well will join us. So, so far we have 54% of you have a workflow that's somewhat automated, but we have gaps. Okay, well, there's always room for improvement. 30% of you have a workflow that's not automated, but we're interested in starting. Well, there's plenty of people on this 
session that can help you with that. And 4% of you have a workflow that's not automated and we're not sure we will make a change. Well, listening to what Eric just said, it's definitely worth the investment. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'm just going to um, open up the floor a bit now and start with some, some questions. But before we do, um, let's just jump back into the questions we had during the demo. Uh, and let's jump into... Okay, so John Bailey, um, he was messaging in when Alex and Paul were in the middle of their demo. Going back a bit, if a user is updating quantities on Infigo, does it create a new quote instance in Print IQ each time, or is it just one instance that is updated if they change the quantity? Yeah, so <clears throat> currently it's uh, it's a new estimate each time. Uh, based on the quantity changes they make. What we have got uh, in Infigo, what we've built in is a, um, without getting too technical, is a, a short-term temporary cache. So if your request, or if you have lots and lots of customers all requesting the same thing, and all of the parameters are the same, we won't necessarily reach out to Print IQ and create another estimate. We'll take it from that cache. So it'll, um, it'll be uh, instant. Um, and it also won't mean that you're creating lots of duplicate same uh, estimates uh, shortly after each other. But at the moment, if uh, if you change in a quantity, um, then it will create a new a new estimate in Print IQ and return the prices against that new estimate. Yeah, thanks, that Alex. Is, that is feedback we've had on that one, Alex. So there is mm -hmm. um, there is something in the background that we're working on that. So that should hopefully become a thing of the past. So the the answer to that, John, question, John, might be different if you ask us again in six months. <laughs> Thank you, chaps. Um, so just carrying on from there, uh, John, another John this time. We are company. We currently have a storefront built in WooCommerce. Can we integrate web to print capability, or will the storefronts need to be rebuilt? I mean, Alex, for you. Uh, yeah, good question. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, you can um, use our API to. Um, it, so, in order to use the Connect Print IQ um, integration, you have to have uh, an Infigo storefront. And depending on what part and what elements of that integration you want to use, depends. Uh, so, if you just wanted to push orders into Print IQ, then you could uh, make an API request from your WooCommerce. Um, site to Infigo to place an order, and that will then travel through into Print IQ and pass all the relevant information. If you wanted to um, have, you know, uh, live inventory um, and uh, creating quotes and everything like that, um, you would need to natively build your, uh, your storefront again, or subsequent storefronts in Infigo to really get all of that functionality. Thanks, Alex. Craig asks, for each unique product, can we send print IQ quote questions to Infigo for the customer to verify or change? For example, verify current or choose a new role form? Yeah, so one thing we have brought in, I don't believe we did quote questions initially, Alex, on it, but what we no. did do um, in the recent changes, originally we always had job references that could be exposed uh, from Infigo into print IQ. <coughs> And um, that's been expanded recently to be more and more reference fields, as well as the ability to pass in additional notes and other items that are needed. So um, I believe the answer from memory is not currently, um, mm -hmm. but there is uh, ways and means to get that info from the customer storefront into Print IQ. Yeah. Thank you, chaps. Naomi asks, we don't work with quotes. Our prices are fixed. So the customer only chooses the options and quantities. Can we use Print IQ with fixed pricing and update annually, for example? Absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. So against um, products within Print IQ, um, you have the ability to not only specify um, prices that are fixed, you can specify prices um, for different customers um, or even leave the prices to be dynamic with a markup. So there's multiple ways of doing it. But on that point, yeah, you can fix the prices and update them however often you want or even just annually thank you paul uh greg asks is the connect link custom product feature active now or coming soon 
uh, imminent. <clears throat> so uh, I was working with our academy manager just this morning to create um, all of the support material that will come with it when it goes live. So um, it's not currently live, but it will be um, available soon. So keep your eyes open for that one. Maybe another webinar coming, Alex. Patrick asks, so we are able to specify stock processes and other options in Infigo versus creating simple sessions for each variant? Yes, essentially with the custom custom quote and piece we showed at the end, that is, um, that is the purpose of it, yeah. Fantastic, okay. While um, somebody else types out, I'm gonna to go to some questions we had from earlier. Uh, this is to the panel what what have you found the most challenging aspect of a build and i say build i'll probably open that to web to print build and mis joined or separate who would like to go first should we start at the front alex <laughs> do web the most challenge most challenging did you aspect. say correct yes um <laughs> um nothing Love that. <laughs> <laughs> no i think like there there are complexities um for example with the print iq integration we support uh multiple because the, obviously the 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 um our product is a platform with multiple storefronts uh and then you've got uh, a single print iq instance so it's how do you get the right products into the right storefront in infigo so really yeah the initial um difficulty comes with making sure that print iq is set up the way it needs to be set up and and then you uh, have a clear plan of how you want to attack that in your web to print once you are clear on how you want it all to work implementing it is more straightforward okay thank you alex um jeff asks us a question i'm going to point this one to you eric actually because you and i have spoken about this can infigo replace my website altogether so in addition to the web to print integration, can I have other tabs like about us, capabilities and contact us, et cetera? Eric, you know why I'm asking you this. Do you want to explain? Yeah, so uh, in the middle of spooling up our web to print, I had a whim one day and I said, you know, my, my main informational website has just become dated and I want to redo it. And uh, we, we had that in WordPress forever. That's probably the fifth evolution of our website. And pretty quickly, we just decided we're just gonna use up one of our uh, storefronts and that is gonna be our website. So my main website is built completely in Figo, even though there's absolutely no uh, transacting going on with it. Maybe at some point I'll do that, but um, it's as a, a content, uh, I don't know, there's a word for that. Um, it, it, it's just so much easier to build websites and especially since we're all familiar in it uh, now anybody needs to go edit anything uh, we're all familiar with it so yeah absolutely it makes great just website software too you don't have to conduct business if you don't want to thank you eric so basically chaps that means replace your wordpress website with an infigo platform and then you can also integrate it later that's the answer to that question um eric also says so this integration works with a specified sorry, simplified or custom quotes, are simplified products necessary to use this system? Open to the panel. Yeah, so I um, can cover that one. Yeah. Um, so the integration um, that we showed initially is based on products. So that is, um, the products can be used within simplified sessions, but they're standalone SKU products. With what Alex showed at the end, um, with the custom quotes, that essentially alleviates the need to um, create the products within Print IQ uh, because it's being generated from what you would use within the custom quotes. Um, it reduces the setup quite a lot um, in that space. Thank you very much, Paul. We have uh, another one from Rob. We have a few larger online ordering sites that would need to be migrated into Infigo understanding that this is the case or, or by case how successful have the migrations been we are meeting with paul later today <laughs> so, rob rob it would have been it would have been interesting for you to join this morning's call because we actually had another customer on um a lady from Cubiquity media who have uh been with us for a couple of years now and been through a lot of the integration uh process with us 
um, and they have ambitions to move over 120 plus uh, customers from their existing um, web to print uh, into Infigo. And so they are going through that process at the moment. I think she mentioned there are about 30 at the moment. She did. But the challenge, the challenge that they have at the moment is that they're trying to move over existing customers onto Infigo. But because of Infigo and Print IQ together, they're also winning new business. So they're also uh, winning new business, putting that onto Infigo and Print IQ, and then also migrating um, uh, existing customers over. So um, how successful has it been? I mean, uh, we can send the recording of that out to you and you can hear it from uh, directly from them. But um, they would say um, on, on two parts from um, uh, existing customers and improving the relationship and the offering that they have for them has been successful with the ones that they have migrated and also obviously that it's allowed them to win this new business that they potentially wouldn't have um, had the opportunity to win if they had not um, thanks alex rob we will send that recording out to you um it is ready so we can we can email you the link to that later on today um i'm going to move over to the other questions from this morning so i'm going to aim this one at Rob at Print IQ UK. What's the top three benefits to the business since it's integrated or gone through the integration? Um, so the two parties together, so Infigo and Print IQ, I think one of the main benefits is obviously you're removing a lot of double entry of data. Um, so it's a massive benefit there. Um, the slickness of the integration and uh, probably the third one. Um, I would say it's just having everything in one system that's flowing realistically. So you're not coming out of one thing and into another. It's just that seamless integration. Thank you very much. Got another one here on the integration. It seems to be that people are asking about the complexity. Is it complex to get the two systems to talk to each other? Does it take a long time? Um, I guess there's some concerns there. I'm going to throw that out to all of you, really, because I think you could all answer that. Is it complex? Well, let's Let's no. let Eric answer because, uh, we, you know, we can say no, but Eric's been through it. So, um. <laughs> no, the, making the actual connection between the two is is uh, very simple. Um, what you want to do with it becomes the bigger question. And <laughs> yeah. but but actually making them making that connection is is nothing. It's a few settings and, and mapping some fields. So, so Paul and Alex have done all the hard work. Are they with their development teams? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one final question to close us out, and this is this is to both Infigo and Print IQ, or maybe combined. Do you offer a full turnkey solution in which you integrate the solutions for us, Paul Bromley? On the spot there, Alex. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can do, and I think that's one of the things between this. Um, it is a relationship, and I think as you'll see with Paul Van Tongren and Alex and. The whole team we, we are friends you know because we do work very closely together so we try and take as much as we can from the customer obviously we need a customer involvement ideally uh, the customer sh should have someone that's got some knowledge in the business because ideally again this is a lot of ideals in there but we want you to understand what's going on because in the future you may need to integrate with other systems or add things on so we do we do um, an element of that ourselves um, so we'll meet with Paul Van Tongeren and uh, likewise with Alex and we'll try and take that heavy lifting away from you and we'll then do the testing but then there'll also be an aspect in the future where we can't say it's solely you know plug and play if you will because as Eric said before you know it's then what else do you want to do with it and where does the integration stop what, so, what we can do is um, obviously via our we build packages Paul is that we can um, spin up a storefront uh, you know whatever it may look like depending on your requirements we can build that for you um so from an infigo part we can we can hand over a you know fully working infigo storefront obviously there's a lot of dependencies on print iq having that set up and how that's set up in order of how the two can communicate but from a print IQ, uh, from an infigo perspective i certainly can hand over a finished uh, storefront whether it be b2b or b2c I think um, one of the, if I may, Chris, it, one of the largest things we're seeing at the moment is that is for IQ um, creating statement at work. So one of the things that Paul Van Togren does, I think, with Alex. So if it is an integration for the two uh, companies here, we create a full statement of works, which 
we can actually both parties can build from so that's really important for the customer as well as us as um the builds realistically so the answer is yes then chaps from both parties i like that fantastic i'm going to try and squeeze two more in because i've just had an absolute belter do you recommend bringing it bringing on or bringing in an mis solution then a web to print or the other way around and why and that's to the all of you what's the order print iq first <laughs> No, no, I would agree. You know, if you get get your uh, get your information and everything sorted, and then um, it depends. I, I think, Alex, what the customer wants as well, doesn't it? It's something that can be done roughly at the same time and then joined. Um, but it's building out that solution first. Yeah, yeah I think and it depends what you for... what you want. What you want? Yeah, but I think good one for Eric to answer that because you know yeah. you could be looking at revenue streams. So the important thing for your business could be, I want to approach new markets and have a, a wider a, a wider influx of uh, of revenue. So, what was your what what were your take, Eric? I I, I did it that way. I, I did print IQ first. Um, I th I think it could be done either way. I don't think that there's going to be a wrong way, but I. I, I think I would do it the same way again, I, just because I think print IQ, there's, there's a lot more to consider, a lot more to build, you know, getting, especially with us with so many pieces of equipment, it, it was just nice having that uh, core thing done so that when we plugged Infigo into it, it literally was, you know, days from the time we got everything set up that, that we could have customers start placing orders. So, um, I, I think that MIS first is probably the way to go, but either Thank way, you, Eric, work. you validated that. We'll take your word. Your word is final. Uh, Craig, last question from Craig. He, he asks, can you talk about your support experience with Infigo, contacting support with different time zones from support perspective? So I think this actually is quite an expansive question. We could talk mm -hmm. about how um, Infigo support works being a UK based company and for how it supports the US. And then Eric, you can explain, I guess, on how you find, does that affect you being based in the US? Um, no, I don't think it's, uh, the time difference has never been an issue for me. Um, I, I've told you guys that I, I wish, and uh, no slide on print IQ support is great there too. But Infigo is, is by far the best support organization I have ever worked with in software, period, full stop. There, there's just no company that does a better job of uh, not just quickly answering you, but usually giving you a, a right answer the first time. If there's uh, just something you're not understanding, they don't make you feel like an idiot. They uh, set you on the right course um, and, and super quickly, super friendly. Uh, I don't know. I, just, I wish I could clone what Infigo does for support and give that to all of my uh, software vendors. It, I can't say enough about the support. Thank you, Eric. That's just about us. We're going to wrap up now. Craig, I hope that covers your question. Thank you to Rob, Paul and Craig from Print IQ. Thank you to Alex and Paul from Infigo. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for joining us today. The recordings will be up shortly. We'll get back to those of asked questions for resources within the next 24 hours. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your input. Goodbye for now.